Hello and welcome to this brief video where we take a look at the differences between Kong Enterprise Edition and Kong Community Edition. We typically get this common question, what are the advantages and benefits of the Enterprise Edition? And when is it advisable to choose it over the Community Edition? We hope to answer this question in this video. Both editions share the common core functionality, including the gateway capabilities and core entities the open source plugins, the plugins development kit, and the Kong Hub, which is available to view the plugins available for both editions. The Enterprise Edition includes all the features that are marked here in blue as per the legend, and they are listed on the left-hand side. We will go through those features now. First, we start with the administrative user interface known as Kong Manager. Developers commonly want to be able to see a comprehensive view of the gateway. And this is where the administrative UI manager comes in. They're able to see all the entities in one place and all the relationship between them. This helps them develop faster and debug faster. The administrative UI is also useful for non-developers, such as operational and administrative staff, so they can also see the settings and configurations and entities available in the gateway, and perhaps take a look at operational incidents that they may come across. Next, we will take a look at the enterprise plugins available with the Enterprise Edition. To do so, we will go to the Kong Hub, where we see all the plugins listed. If we filter only the Kong Community Edition plugins, we will see a basic list here, including common authentication, perhaps using basic authentication or API key. And if we want to do traffic control, we have access control lists, caching, rate limiting, and the like, all useful plugins. If we turn on the Enterprise Edition, we now have access to more functionality. For example, working with GraphQL or Kafka traffic, being able to enforce rate limiting and caching in a high load cluster where all the late rate limits and caches are shared between the various nodes, and enforcing perhaps authentication using OpenID Connect, OAuth, or Mutual TLS. Typically organizations that have high security requirements and demands will select the Enterprise Edition. Next, we will take a look at being able to have different development teams share the same cluster by using different workspaces and enforcing role-based access control. If we switch back to our management user interface, we'll see that we have the workspaces feature. The idea is that we want different teams to have their own environment, their own sandbox, their own location where they can work on their entities. And we can do so by the team, by the name of the team, by the project, by the business unit, or really any other mechanism or taxonomy that we want to use. We then can assign administrators and developers to work on those workspaces and further limit what they can do per workspace. For example, some developers may be able to create routes only, whereas other developers can create services and plugins. Next, we will take a look at the monitoring feature available within the Enterprise Edition. This is an efficient, lightweight capability to do rudimentary monitoring, analytics, and reporting for both the traffic that flows through the proxy as well as the proxy itself. If we click on vitals over here, we're able to see this data. And we can see here the data about how the proxy is performing itself, about how the upstream services are performing. This data can be sliced and diced based on the various workspaces. And we can further slice it and dice it based on the consumers, the services, the routes, the status code, and so forth. This is especially useful for generating reports to give direction to where the development or projects that are coming up next for the gateway should be like. Next, we will take a look at an alerting feature using artificial intelligence. This is an optional feature in the Enterprise Edition and it learns the traffic patterns that flow through the gateway over time and detects anomalies based on them. You see here we have two anomalous events that have an alert and we can create more rules that may trigger other alerts. If we click on create rule, for example, 
we can see that the engine in the background will detect unusual status codes, traffic patterns, latency patterns, and various aspects of parameters. This is used in combination to perhaps a web application firewall as yet another layer of defense and security using artificial intelligence. We next look at yet another optional feature, which is the developer portal. And this is used to document and publish APIs and manage credentials of developers that may use the proxy. Typically, the developers will want to know what APIs are available and how to use them, and also perhaps manage how to access them. The portal is fully themable, so developers that want to publish can edit the logos and backgrounds and text and maybe add their own documentation. External consumers are then able to browse the various API specifications, search them based on tagging, for example, and try them out either in a mocked version or to run a test in their application, perhaps using a code snippet that they can deploy in their own application. So this concludes the features and the differences between Kong Enterprise Edition and Community Edition. Non-features include the technical account management, professional services, and training or otherwise self-learning available in Kong University, as well as 24-7 support. And this is appreciated by organizations that are looking to a faster time to value from the uh, Kong platform and to make sure that they have assured success and to avoid perhaps any pitfalls by employing the best practices from Kong. We hope that this short video has been useful to you and we wish, wish you much success regardless of which version of Kong you use.